next session on finite element analysis. In this session, we are going to discuss about the H and P method of mesh refinement which is used in FEA. The H and P methods are terms commonly associated with numerical methods used in FEA for solving partial differential equations. These methods are used to discretize the domain of the problem such as structural or fluid domain into finite elements and approximate the solution within each element. First, we'll talk about the H method. It is also called as H refinement. In the H method, the size of the elements is refined to improve the accuracy of the solution. This means that you divide the domain into smaller elements by increasing the number of modes or elements. As you refine the mesh, reduce the size of elements, the solution typically converges to the exact solution. However, this refinement comes at the cost of increased computational resources. The edge method is straightforward and widely used, especially when the solution has discontinuous or sharp gradients. You can go through the answers videos that I have created. You will see that in most of the meshing part, I have changed the force mesh to fine mesh. The reason is when you increase the number of elements and nodes, you are directly improving the solution and you bring it closer to the exact solution. So that is what H method is all about. Here you can see that in the first case, say there is an object which has been meshed in this format with number of elements being 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and number of nodes here you can see are 6. When you make the mesh finer, what you do is you divide this element. You can see this triangle itself has been divided into 1, 2, 3, 4. Four smaller triangles in itself, this small part. Similarly, this has been divided into 4 and similarly, others have also been divided into 4. So, the total number of elements from 4 becomes 16 and the number of nodes from 6 become 15. So, when you do this, your PC or the desktop that you use needs to have a better computation speed. Otherwise, the running of such kind of problems become difficult. And what happens is your PC gets hanged after a certain point when the number of meshes increase. Now, I have given you a very simple example of 4 elements becoming 16. It is possible that it is 4000 elements becoming 16000 elements. So, in that case, you can understand that what happens to the computational speed. It requires a lot of speed to run. So, this is something which requires more computational speed so that you go closer to the exact solution. Next, we will talk about the P method. It is also called as P refinement. In the P method, the order of the polynomial used to approximate the solution is increased while keeping the mesh size constant. You can recollect the numericals that we have done in FPA of FDM method when I used to tell you that if you assume the solution of higher order, suppose we used to assume solution as y is equal to c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared. I have told you that if you increase this order to c3x cube plus c4x is to 4 and so on and so forth, what would happen is your solution would be better. But in that case, you need more number of boundary conditions to solve the problem. Since the problem which we had was a standard one and which was always having two boundary conditions, so we used to assume maximum degree 2 or degree 3 to solve the problem. So, this is that method where you increase the order of the polynomial to make it give you better solution. In a P method, the order of the polynomial used to approximate the solution is increased while keeping the mesh size constant. So, you are not going to change the size of your mesh. It can be coarse itself. Essentially, you use higher order polynomial shape functions within each element. By increasing the polynomial order, the approximation can capture more details of the solution without changing the mesh. This can lead to more accurate results compared to the H method for a given mesh size. The P method is particularly useful when you want to maintain a coarse mesh but desire higher accuracy. It is often used when the solution varies smoothly. In practice, a combination of H and P refinement methods 
known as HP refinement, can also be employed to achieve a balance between accuracy and computational efficiency. So you can see that this method will be more accurate as compared to H method, but computational efficiency is more for the H method. So what happens is you can use a combination of both and create a solution which will be a balance between both of them. So I'll show you a figure of P method. This is the original mesh as we have discussed and this is now the P refinement. You can see that the element size is still the same. It's just that the nodes have increased which means you are going for higher order polynomials. So here you can see that the initial number of nodes were 6 and now it is 15. It is because of the higher order polynomial that you have used. We have some more things to discuss about the H method and the P method. First we will discuss about the H method. More accurate information is obtained by increasing the number of elements. The name for the H method is borrowed from mathematics. The variable H is used to specify the step size in numeric integration. If a part is modeled with a very coarse mesh, then the stress distribution across the part will be very inaccurate. To increase the accuracy of the solution, more elements must be added. This means creating a finer mesh. As an initial run, a coarse mesh is used to model the problem. A solution is obtained. To check the solution, a finer mesh is created. That is what we generally do when we are solving any answers problem. We initially create a mesh, we check what is the solution and then we create a finer mesh. The mesh must always be changed if a more accurate solution is desired. The problem is run again to obtain a second solution. If there is a large difference between the two solutions, then the mesh must be made even finer and then solve the solution again. So what you can do is you can continue making your meshes finer till you don't get a better solution. This process is repeated until the solution is not changing much from run to run. So between any two meshes that you have created, if the solution doesn't vary much, then you can assume that you have converged your solution. So you can see here, this is the H method with coarse mesh. And then when you increase the number of meshes, you can see that your solution is getting better. And this is the step size, as you can see, that is this distance, that is called as H which is now reducing from coarse to fine. Next, we will go for the P method again. The P in P method stands for polynomial. Large elements and complex shape functions are used in P method problems. To increase the accuracy of the solution, the complexity of the shape function must be increased. Increasing the polynomial order increases the complexity of the shape function the mesh does not need to be changed when using the P method. You can still go for the coarse mesh that you have used in the first run. As an initial run, the solution might be solved using a first order polynomial shape function. A solution is obtained. To check the solution, the problem will be solved again using a more complicated shape function. So say you are using degree 2, increase the degree to 3. For the second run, the solution may be solved using a third order polynomial shape function. A second solution is obtained. The output from the two runs is compared. If there is a large difference between the two solutions, then the solution should be run using a third order polynomial shape function. This process is repeated until the solution is not changing much from run to run. So in the H method, what you do is you increase the number of nodes. In P method, what you do is you increase the order of the polynomial. So that helps you get better solution. So you can see here that the mesh is still coarse. The H value which you have seen before is constant for both the diagrams. For the first diagram, you can see that it is P method with second order polynomial. And this is P method with third order polynomial. You can see that your solution is getting better. You are able to capture the area better and get better solutions. Last we will see the difference between H method and P method. Here we are seeing necessary the difference between the H code and the P code. Element order. For H code it is fixed by the user, usually first or second. For P code it is variable. It is auto selected and auto adjusted. 
first to ninth to meet convergence criteria as defined by user. Next topic of discussion is element shape. For H code, it is too small. Say it is 500 to 50,000 plus typically. And P code, it is too large, 50 to 500 plus typically. Convergence method. For H code, it is manual by mesh refinement, adding more elements. And for P code, it is automatic, inherent part of every solution by increasing element order. Convergence solution for H code, one run entails one solution with unknown accuracy. And P code, one run entails several solutions to specified convergence accuracy. Meshing for H code, it is automated but often creates unacceptable elements. For P code, it is automated. P elements produce acceptable elements as they can handle distortions better than the H elements. Design optimization for H code it is manual and for P code it is automated. Target user for H code is analyst or experienced FA engineer and for P code it is the design engineers who are using the software. So this is what is present in the software at the back end. This is not something that you generally use but what you see on the screen is what type of mesh you want. You want to go for five or ports and you get some solutions. You can also change the element size. The new versions of ANSYS do not have the option for changing from ports to five. They have the option of giving element size. So in that case, you can just give the size of the element. The more smaller you make it, the better is the solution because you make it finer. But again, when you define the mesh size, or the element size, please be careful about the processor that you are using. If your processor is not of a higher and good quality or of the latest one, then your PC or desktop can just get hanged and it can go on forever. You may have to just shut down your PC and start it once again. That happens because your computation speed is not good for the laptop or PC that you are using. Last, we will talk about some key points of this topic. Choosing between H and P methods depends on the specific characteristics of the problem. For problems with sharp gradients or discontinuities, H refinement may be more suitable, while P refinement may be preferred for problems with smooth variations. The choice also depends on computational resources and the desired level of accuracy. So you need to decide what is the shape that you are trying to give meshing to, what kind of solution do you want, also, what kind of resources are available with you? Say you have a PC which can have a good computation speed, then you can go for H method. Your accuracy will be affected a bit, but at least you will be able to use a lot of elements and nodes and then get to the exact solution. When you have a hardware where you do not have the higher computation speed, then you can go for P type of refinement. So with this, I end the session. I hope you have understood the concept. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.